Our species, anatomically modern humans, are young species with very little genetic variation. Would you like to know how little? We have less genetic variation than one group of Western African chimpanzees. Our species, in fact, really does not have biological races. So humans present this conundrum. Science helps us in saying race, right, black, white, Asian, are not biological units. So how is it that humans can be so widespread and look so different and yet share so much in common? That's a huge challenge for science to figure out because that's not the typical pattern for mammals. My job as an educator is to understand the ways in which race is real and the ways in which it's not real. It is a lived experience. Um, it does have impacts on our biology, but it is not biology. Americans routinely conflate socially defined and biological conceptions of race. They are not the same thing. That's what's hard for people to understand, that these social constructs, these ways of being, these structures of history and politics and economics and health are very, very real, but they're not explained by our biology. Science certainly has been responsible for some of the ideas that we have about race, about thinking about human difference, um, some that have particularly been damaging uh, to, to many communities, so I think science has both a role and a responsibility in, in mitigating that damage. Racial ideas have been at the root of so much discord in human history. Their science was filtered through a racist, colonialist bias that they had doing the work. And the tragedy of our past racial thinking is that we have taken what are essentially superficial physical traits and we've imputed great significance to them. So understanding the science behind human variation allows you to dispel the myth of race. Now genetics have become a tool where we can explore distant relationships. It can upend the narrative and really cause us to question what we think we know. When we dismantle racist concepts, it makes us a whole lot easier for us to be able to view other human beings as precisely that, people who have the same aspirations as I do. Once you've dispelled the biological underpinning for inequality in this country, you're then faced with a political, historical, and social reality. And as a moral and ethical imperative, you have to deal with that. And that's why it's so hard to teach race and racism, because people don't want to deal with how messed up we are and how hard it is to get out of this hole we've dug for ourselves.